Welcome to Wisconsin in Focus. I'm J.D. Davidson. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers doesn't kid around when it comes to school funding, or at least how long Wisconsin public schools should be funded. Thanks to a veto, Evers made sure the schools would be funded well into the next century, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. That's 400 years. Joining us today is Ben Yount, Wisconsin contributor for the Center Square. Ben, what's the background on the veto and the school funding, and who else thinks the governor went too far? Well, this was something that, depending on which cable news network you watched when it happened, the governor was either cheered or there was this massive sense of disbelief of he really just signed a 400-year yearly per-pupil school funding increase. Uh, the state's largest business group, the WMC, Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, they have a, a legal arm called the WMC Litigation Center. This week, they asked the Wisconsin Supreme Court to take this question up. They file a lawsuit trying to strike down this veto, and they say it's, it's unconstitutional because it, it violates two tenets of the balance of power. One, uh, the governor, while Wisconsin's governors have extremely powerful line item vetoes, there was a state constitutional amendment back in the 90s that did away with what was called the Vanna White veto. And this was when uh, the governor at the time would eliminate certain letters in individual pieces of legislation to essentially rewrite the legislation that he wants. You can't do that. There's a line item veto. You can cross certain things out, but you can't go certain letters. In in this veto, Evers crossed out a couple of numbers and a couple of dashes and turned what was a two-year per pupil school funding increase into a 400-year per pupil school funding increase. The second constitutional question is that the the way that it works in, in Wisconsin, and I'm pretty sure in every state, is that spending bills have to start in the House. And whenever there is an appropriation, whenever there is money spent, that has to come from lawmakers and go through the legislative process. And the governor here just created a 400 year expenditure without going through lawmakers. And so that's going to be a different even if you even if you agree wholeheartedly with the governor who who says that this is just an effort to put more money into the state's public schools. It's going to be tough to get around the the basic constitutional notion that while governors can spend money in all manners of ways, they don't get to decide what money they get to spend. They can the the legislature gives them the money and then the governor can spend that as as he sees fit. But he can't decide what money he gets. That's the job of the legislature, specifically here in Wisconsin, the state assembly. I'm not really sure where to begin. I want the power to cross out letters and laws and make them different. If I knew that's how being a governor was going to be, I might run. The thing that I really can't wrap my head around is whether you're a staunch supporter of public schools and and increasing funding for public schools, 400 years just makes the law unbelievable at that point, unserious. Yeah, I mean, it, look, it's go big or go home, and and I think that that in a, in a certain manner, to, in a certain sense, it, this governor had to know that whatever he did, whether it was a ten year school funding increase or a fifty year school funding increase, I, I think that that he figured, well, you know, it's going to be challenged, so why not? The other thing that you have to to remember is that the Vanna White veto doesn't allow you to add letters in it only allows you to cross them out and so what what the governor did was was take uh you know take some of the numbers out to go from 2023 to 2024 and make it you know till you know 24 44 whatever the 400 year number would be out of there and so the the reason it's 400 years is because he couldn't add in numbers he had to take numbers out but yeah, I, I remember watching MSNBC right after this this video or right after this veto was signed, and Chris Hayes and the rest of the crew over there were were applauding this governor as doing something that no one else in the country has ever done, setting up schools for the next four centuries. And 
you know, it, 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 people often play to the crowd. I mean, look, Bon Jovi's still traveling around playing You Give Love a Bad Name. And this governor is, is, is playing the hits for the people who voted for him, whether this stands, whether they ever thought it stood. But this gets to a, another constant refrain from Republicans here in Wisconsin is that this is a governor who would much rather issue these kinds of vetoes, issue these kinds of declarations, and go ahead with these kinds of unilateral edicts rather than negotiate with lawmakers. How many times have we talked about the, the, the debacle over PFAS? And it all sort of ties into the theme that this is Tony Evers' governing style. He wants Republicans to give him what he wants, and if he doesn't get it, he either goes to the courts or issues vetoes or tries to go around having to work with lawmakers. It's worthwhile, by the way, to note that the governor got the two year per pupil funding increase that he got by negotiating with Republicans. It was part of a, a school funding deal that included an expansion of school choice, and that was tied in part to the Brewer's Ballpark deal. So by by getting sitting down at the table and talking with one another, the governor was able to get a little, but as Republicans in the state house will tell you, he then tried to get a lot by using his veto power or using his bully pulpit or going to the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And that that is the snapshot of Tony Evers as governor. That's how he leads, Republicans say. Is there any indication on if the court will take will, will take this case and when they might take it? it there is no indication so far. Uh, this is one of the things that the, the liberal majority Wisconsin Supreme Court is very busy. Uh, this week they, they, they offered to get arguments for an abortion case. They are looking to, to challenge other cases as well. And so, you know, the docket is getting very big. And don't forget, we've got a Wisconsin Supreme Court election next year. And there's a fear that perhaps Republicans could flip the court back to conservative majority. So there's some talk around the campfire, right? And there is an expectation that as opposed to taking up this case, which looks to be a sure loser, that Democrats, the liberal majority Supreme Court may try and take cases that they really want to to, to handle, such as challenges to Act 10 or right to work or concealed carry to try and get all of those in before next year when there could be an election that could possibly change the makeup of the court court going forward. Yeah, this will be interesting to watch for sure. Ben, thanks for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. Do you care about classroom curriculum, transparency policies, and how your taxpayer dollars are invested in education, but you find it hard to cut through the partisan noise? Chalkboard News is bringing you straight news reporting on public K-12 education. We're talking news without spin. Chalkboard News publishes fact-based stories that make sense to parents, teachers, and readers who have skin in the game. Get this news delivered to your inbox for free by signing up at chalkboardnews.com. Subscribe today at chalkboardnews.com.